Hi everybody, and welcome to week one of the course. This week we will be going over a number of foundational concepts that are going to inform our readings and discussions this semester. I've said before, but I'll repeat it here, that the ethos of this course involves a lot of iteration and multiple cycles of revisiting and deepening and fine-tuning our models as we go, building towards a polished, finished product at the end. So I am throwing a lot of new ideas at you in these first few weeks of the course, and it may feel overwhelming at first, so just remember our goal at the beginning is just to get some basic preliminary concepts lined up. It is okay for now just to skim through the readings for main points. We are going to circle back and revisit all of these concepts in more detail as we go along. So if you get to the end of this week and feel like you've got just a basic outline of the different threads that we are working with, you are in good shape. So the purpose of this lecture is to underline some of those main points from each thread for you, and also to talk about how they are all going to fit together to form an overarching framework to guide our discussions and our work as instructional designers. As you can see, that framework already has a name, and that name is TPAC. This is a theory of teacher knowledge, so it is pretty handy for our purposes because it's a theory that seeks to answer the question, what do I as a teacher need to know? And the answer that it comes up with is that you need to know about these three areas of technology, pedagogy, and content. And you also need to know how they interact with each other. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. First, some very quick background about the TPAC framework. So back in 1986, an educational psychologist named Lee Shulman published this model of pedagogical content knowledge. He had found in his research that the way experts in a field tended to organize knowledge and form questions to investigate is different from the way that novices organize knowledge and form questions. This may seem obvious, but we've all had professors, I'm sure, for whom it was not obvious. <laughs> so the things that experts notice and consider important are different from the things that novices notice. And so in order for an expert to successfully teach a novice about their subject, it's not enough to know just about the subject itself, the content knowledge, but they also need to be able to see the subject from a novice perspective and organize information in a way that's going to make sense to somebody who doesn't already have all the background knowledge of the expert. And that being able to reframe it in that way. That's the pedagogical knowledge. And these two knowledge domains, CK and PK, interact and form pedagogical content knowledge, or PCK, which is specific knowledge of how to effectively teach and present information and assess learning within that subject. So this construct of pedagogical content knowledge was reasonably popular and influential. People liked it, it made sense, and it helped teachers and instructional designers organize their thoughts about what they needed to keep in mind and to know to plan good lessons. And then 20 years went by, and the landscape of education changed, just a very small amount, really negligibly from 1986 to 2006. I'm sure nothing important happened. Uh, but along come these two researchers in 2006, Punya Mishra and Matt Kohler, and they were interested in what teachers need to know about effectively using technology in their teaching. And they wound up taking Shulman's model and adding this third knowledge domain of technological knowledge, or TK. And they added that to Shulman's original two and that created the TPAC framework. So, uh, Kohler and Mishra create this TPAC framework by adding a third domain onto Shulman's original two. But it turns out that in doing that, they actually made things more complicated than they initially thought, because by adding just this one more primary domain, they went from three domains of knowledge in Shulman's 
model, two primary and one secondary domain, to seven in the TPAC models. They more than doubled the total number of distinct constructs, distinct types of knowledge that make up the model with three primary domains and now three secondary domains where each of the two overlap and then a third tertiary domain in the center combining everything together. And going on 15 years after they initially published the first uh, article about the TPAC model, there's still a lot of people working on this model and trying to fill in all these details of these different interactions and overlapping types of knowledge and how they work together and fill in that detail more clearly. And when we hit another 20 years in 2026, Honestly, who knows what teaching and technology are going to look like and how the TPAC framework might get updated and adapted for the next generation. It feels like education is moving very quickly, so who knows what the next five years will bring. Uh, but that's a discussion for the future. So right now, let's get back to our overview of how we're going to use TPAC in this course to bring together the different conceptual threads we need to think and talk fruitfully about media in teaching and learning, which is our topic in this course. Let me draw your attention to the big circle around the whole figure here, the one that is labeled contexts and definitely not anything else. That's there as a reminder that all of these different types of knowledge only exist in a meaningful way relative to real-world situations and circumstances. We say that TPAC is a situated framework, and what that means is that anytime you want to use TPAC, you have to start by defining what TK and PK and CK mean in the specific situation or context that you are teaching in, because they can mean very different things for different teachers in different circumstances. Obviously, for a lot of us, the TK we thought we needed at the start of last school year is very different from the TK we need now at the start of this school year. And even now, the TK that you would need to teach in a school that has a one-to-one -one laptop program is different from the TK that you might need if you're teaching in a school where a lot of your students don't have reliable home internet access. PK, pedagogical knowledge, is going to be very different between a teacher in a kindergarten classroom and a teacher in a high school, or a teacher working with non-native English speakers, or at-risk students, or in a boarding school, or in any other pedagogical context. The pedagogical knowledge you need really depends on the details. And of course, content knowledge uh, of course, it varies by subject, obviously, but also within subjects. The content knowledge that you need for teaching ancient history in a middle school and the content knowledge for teaching American history to college freshmen, those are very distinct bodies of knowledge, even if they share a common overarching frame of reference as history. They're still distinct in those contexts. So that is what it means to say that TPAC is a situated theory. It means that you have to define your terms up front in order to get any use out of it. And so that is what we're going to do right now. Let's work backwards through the TPAC acronym. So we'll start with CK, content knowledge. This is very easy for me to talk about here because it is 100% on you all to define this piece for yourselves. You are already experts in your subjects, more expert than me. You know the curriculum that you're teaching better than I ever will. And so this driving question is for you to answer. What do I want my students to know? One way to think about content knowledge is this is the knowledge that you have that you want your students to have by the end of the lesson. And this question of what you 
what knowledge you want your students to have will then inform your approach to designing activities and assessments, which is the pedagogical piece, PCK, and your approach to what tools and resources you're going to have them use to do that, which is the technological piece, the TCK. Then we have pedagogical knowledge, PK, and in this course, we are going to be using Bloom's taxonomy to structure our discussion of pedagogy and PK. Bloom's taxonomy is all about the verbs and trying to answer this question of what students are actually doing or what we want them to do. And the emphasis is really on observable activities that we can see, we can assess, and we can draw conclusions from what students do. And again, this question informs the other domains and how we approach technology by determining how we select the right tools or platforms that will allow students to do the verbs we want them to do. And it informs content and how we prioritize the concepts that are most important for our students to be able to verb those adjectival nouns adverbially. It's a little English major humor for you. Don't worry about it. Last, but also first, because we've been working backwards, we have technological knowledge, TK. And this is the part where I need to do a little more of the heavy lifting because uh, the topic of our course is, of course, media, which is a form of technology. One of the major criticisms of the TPAC framework, and I think it's a very fair criticism, is that technology is super broad and not well defined. Technically speaking, a book is technology. A pencil is technology. We've been teaching with technology since the first time one primate showed another primate how to use a rock to crack open nuts. So even more than the other domains, it's really important to be super clear up front about what you mean by technology when you're looking to apply this TPAC framework. Obviously, for the purposes of this course, the technology we're interested in is media technology in its various different forms. We'll be looking at four categories of graphics, audio, video, and interactive or computer media. And the driving question here is for any given media object that you could potentially use, what are its features and what are its affordances? To answer that question, we will be drawing from a couple theoretical threads, the first being semiotics, which is the study of symbols and symbol systems. Uh, which all media are made up out of. And the second thread is the concept of affordance, which examines what an object invites us to do, what it allows us to do, how we can and do interact with things. These may seem like very distinct threads right now, but as we go along, I think you'll find that they're much more connected than they might seem at first. Uh, And before we wrap up, I'll just note once again that the questions that drive our approach to TK also inform our approaches to content in terms of considering what is being communicated and how it's being communicated, and to pedagogy in terms of considering how media affordances line up with the activities, the verbs that we want our students to be doing. So that's how we form the TCK and the TPK subdomains, secondary domains, I should say. Okay, we're almost done with this quick overview, but I just want to note briefly one of the affordances of this TPAC framework is that it allows teachers to pick from multiple starting points and multiple paths towards building this central domain of TPCK in the middle of the diagram that brings together all the different knowledge domains in the context and allows teachers to design lessons and curricula that are effective, that leverage all of their knowledge together, working together in a useful way. 
For example, you can start here in content knowledge with maybe a specific skill you want your students to have. And then you go on to figure out what they need to do to practice that skill. And that's the pedagogical piece, the verbs. And then once you've figured that out, you know what features to look for in the tools or the technology you're going to want to use that will allow them to do that. Or you might start out with a piece of technology that you want to use or that you have to use because the school board says you do. Uh, and you start by determining what you can do with it. And then you, from there, decide what you want to do with it with your students. So that's the pedagogical piece again. And then the content piece comes in and your approach is shaped by what you decide coming out of the technological and the pedagogical domains. Or maybe you start even further out at the context level, like we all had to do last spring, where we're suddenly in this very different teaching context from what we're used to and what our students are used to with the shutdown. And you have to go back to the real basics. Okay, my students need something to do. What can I give them to keep them engaged? And you figure that out. That's the pedagogical piece. And then from there, you go on to content and technology and working out how you're going to do that and how you're going to keep your students active <laughs> to the extent that it's possible. So all of these different paths are possible within the TPAC framework, and all of them are valid ways, I think, to do instructional design. If I was a good student of Bloom's taxonomy, I'd probably insist that you always have to start with the verbs, the concrete objectives. But I am not a good student of Bloom's taxonomy, and I think if you have a cool piece of technology that you want to try out, or an idea from your content knowledge that really excites you and you want to share with your students, it is perfectly okay to make that the starting point of your design process. And I hope that you all will see this TPAC framework as a way to explore some of these different approaches and maybe recognize what your own style or preference looks like and what your driving questions and goals are as a teacher and as an instructional designer and how that shapes your approach and what the strengths and maybe what some of the limitations of that style or approach are. Okay, with that, I am going to wrap up for now. Here are some next steps for you to go through. I want you to think about what we just covered and contextualize it for your own teaching experience. Remember that context is really essential for using this framework. Go through the readings for this week if you haven't already. Remember that it is okay this week to just skim for main ideas. There's a lot of ground to cover. We will fill in more detail about all of these things over the next few weeks. So just find those main points, identify what potentially interests you, what you want to explore more, what you might still have questions about and you need to fill in before we move too far ahead, all of that. Uh, complete the check-in for this first week, and once you've done all that, we are off and running. I'm really looking forward to hearing your thoughts, and I will catch up with you on the discussion forums. I hope you have a good week and a good start to the school year, and I will talk to you again soon.